a very good evening to you all today i am going to discuss about fallopian tube blockage as we all know this is one of the important causes of infertility so let's just see what fallopian tube blockage is all about now as you know that the uterus is secreted in the lady's pelvic area and then it is attached to the fallopian tube and the ovary the ovary releases the egg once in a month in the middle of the cycle and then the tube has to take the egg right in the fallopian tube and meet the sperm the fertilization happens in the fallopian tube and then the embryo gets formed travels back and then implants in the uterus so the tube is like the ivf laboratory fertilization embryo development picking of the egg everything happens in the fallopian tube so you can imagine how important it is for a pregnancy now why do fallopian tubes get blocked it can get blocked because there is an infection an infection can be a silent infection it's called ascending infection which travel up the vagina through the uterus through the fallopian tubes or it can present with fever discharge the fallopian tubes can be blocked because of endometriosis though in sometimes endometriosis tubes are actually open and they kind of the blood travels back through the tube but sometimes they are not working because of that an ectopic pregnancy a pregnancy in the tube might damage the tube and may not allow further pregnancies to happen a fibroid which is there in the uterus can compress on the fallopian tube and stop it from doing its function previous surgery can cause for example an appendix surgery in the past may lead to additions in the pelvis and may cause tubal problems later on of course blocking of the tubes is a direct cause of tubal blockage and tubal problem tuberculosis is an important pelvic infection in our country which leads to tubal damage now how do we know that the tubes are blocked usually the first test that is done is called a hysterosalpingogram or an hsg it's a procedure where a dye is inserted internally and it's pushed through the uterus it's supposed to come out through the fallopian tubes and outside so if there is a spillage like this it's called that the tubes are patent the other test which can be done when you don't have an extra machine for which the hsg is needed but you have an ultrasound machine is you push the a similar dye again through the uterus it comes out but you look at it through the ultrasound to see whether the dye is coming out or not it's called a histro contrast sonosalpingography called a hico z or a sono salpingography or a saline salpingography where you just use saline and not a contrast medium the final gold standard test for tubal test is called a laparoscopy and in a laparoscopy we put in a port through the abdomen and we see the uterus ovaries tubes the uh, dye coming out you can see the blue dye here uh, inside the pelvis with our own eyes and you can see how much more clear it is as compared to these black and white films so obviously a laparoscopy gives us more information so what is the difference between the other tube test and laparoscopy the other tube tests are less expensive there is no need of general anesthesia and therefore it is more painful but it is not 100% a sensitive that means accurate sometimes because of tubal spasm uh, it may show a blocked tube 
So there are errors in these testing. Uh, you can flush the tubes while you're pushing the tie. So many times they've done a tubal test and then the ladies got pregnant the next cycle. You cannot treat any other pathologies, uh, which can be done in a laparoscopy. So a laparoscopy is expensive, is invasive, is done under anesthesia, but is accurate, gold standard. Corrective procedures for mild to moderate tubal problems can be done. And it is useful for other conditions like polycystic ovaries, you can do the ovarian drilling, endometriosis, cystectomy. So I'm a big fan for laparoscopy where it can be done. So what are the treatment options for tubal blockage? For pelvic infection, sometimes giving pelvic inflammatory disease, antibiotics, antitubercular treatment, it can be helpful. Surgical, you can do tubal flushing, adhesiolysis, tuboplasty, tubal recanalization. So not all tubes which are blocked can be corrected surgically. The bad tubes, the frozen pelvis tubes cannot be corrected. But some tubes you can just flush and open out the blood and the mucous matter. You can cut all the thick adhesions with the gut, the omentum and free the tube. You can do corrective surgery like you are seeing here. There is a damage here and you have removed the damage and you can then sew it. But these surgeries, like when you have done a tubal ligation for sterilization in the past, opening up doors have given some good results. Tubal flushing or tubal cannulization, there is a block right in the beginning and you have put in a catheter to remove that block. These lead to good results surgically, but other categories where there is bad infection and all that, they do not give us good results. Block tubes, IVF. So when your other methods like medicine, surgery have not worked, then you have to do the in vitro fertilization method. In vitro fertilization bypasses the tube and gives the good results. Now, what are the comparison between IVF and tuboplasty? IVF is expensive. You have to do it many times, but it is more successful. There is less chance of ectopic pregnancy. It is more appropriate in cases of advanced age and male factor. But tuboplasty, if there are other procedures uh, like um, male factor, endometriosis, they cannot be corrected. So I'd like to conclude by saying that tubal tests are an important part of evaluation of infertility. Not all tests have the same amount of accuracy. Laparoscopy is invasive but gold standard and can also be corrective at times. Tubal repair is successful, not in all cases, but in some selective cases. And IVF is the final answer for tubal infertility. So if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. There's a special form of tubal damage called hydrosalping, which we shall cover in yet another video. So thank you once again for your patient hearing and we hope to hear from you soon.